You know, we say on this channel that the best camera in the world, the absolute number one camera ever made, is the one that you have with you at the time. And for a lot of people, in a lot of cases, it's one of these, their smartphone. People have these things with them in their pockets wherever they go all the time, and in a lot of situations, myself included, this is the camera that you're taking pictures with. And a lot of people, including myself, are happy with the pictures that you get from it. But how good are the pictures? I mean, really, how good are the pictures that you get from a smartphone like this? Well, today I'm gonna to run around, take a few quick pictures with my iPhone X and my Canon EOS R, and go in the computer and compare them and show you exactly what they look like next to each other, what the differences are, and we'll see how good the smartphone really is. So I brought my images into Lightroom and I touched them up just a little bit for color and brightness to make sure that they match pretty well. So let's just dig into a few of these images here. I'll show you the first one. So we have the Canon R on the left and the iPhone on the right. And basically, other than cropping an angle a little bit, they're basically the same picture. Uh, digging in deeper, you can see definitely the Canon's got a lot more megapixels, so this is gonna blow up a little bit larger. Uh, the iPhone on the left uh, it still looks good. It looks a little bit, if you look closely, it looks a little bit digital um, down here, uh, almost as if you had maybe cranked up like the, the sharpness or the, the clarity on your, uh, on your Lightroom. Uh, it looks a little bit digital over here. Uh, but you know, looking at it like this, looking back, you're basically getting the same image. So if you're looking at this on a phone, or on a computer, you're getting a very, very similar image. Same thing with this one here. The images are very, very similar. So if you're just looking to take a snapshot, something that you're gonna use on your phone, you're getting a very, very similar picture. The iPhone does a really good job of capturing images like this. Heading into the backyard, you, you basically almost can't tell the difference between these images. The Canon on the left, the iPhone on the right. You wouldn't be able to tell from looking at it like this, which one was which on your smartphone, on your computer, they're, they're basically the same image. When you dig deeper, when you really look at the details, you can start to see on the iPhone image, it starts to look a little bit digital. It, it's almost like an effect, like if you were applying an effect to your Canon image in Lightroom with sharpness or something like that, you're gonna get a similar effect to that. But those are just basic standard wide angle shots. Where you're gonna to start to see a bit of a difference is in starting to push the camera more to the extreme edges, meaning not your regular sunny day wide angle landscape shots, something a little bit different. Like this, I stopped this down, the Canon shot is on the left, I stopped it down to F8, and I still had a nice out of focus background. The iPhone image on the right, background's a little bit out of focus, but it's, if I wanted to focus just on this little miniature lighthouse here, I'm having a hard time doing it with the iPhone. And you really can't compare settings on each one because of this, the sensor size. The sensor of the iPhone is really, really tiny. So the equivalent focal length on the Canon, which is 24 millimeters here, versus the iPhone, which it's like three or four millimeters or something like that. You really can't compare apples to apples. But looking into the detail, you're basically getting a very similar image on the part that's in focus here, this little lighthouse. You're getting a very similar image on the both. Again, on the right with the iPhone, you're getting a little bit of a, of a digital effect uh, in the sharpest parts, but that's really just the basic processing that's done by the camera. And it's that way with a lot of uh, small cameras. Again, when we compare like the big pro level DSLRs to these smaller cameras, like maybe the Canon M50, these are the areas where you're getting very, very similar results. It's when you start changing things and pushing things more to the extreme is where things get a little bit different. So here's my little Chick-fil-A cow that I won fair and square. On the left, I shot it at 2.8 uh, with my Canon EOS R. And on the right, I shot with the iPhone and I used portrait mode. I wanted to try to blur the background as much as possible. And I tried a lot of different ways and this is as blurry as I can get the background. Uh, basically, so you can see a huge difference here in the background blur between the Canon on the left and the iPhone on the right. This is using portrait mode again on the iPhone. You know, dig a little bit deeper and you can see basically, you know, these are similar images here as far as the sharpness and contrast and everything, you know, basically very similar right in the middle here but the big difference that you're getting again this is kind of pushing the camera more to the extreme is in the background area now uh, with the full frame mirrorless camera getting that nice 
background blur where you really wouldn't be able to get that with the iPhone. And then digging deeper into some of the darker areas in the background, you can see now you're starting to get a lot of digital noise. You're starting to get a lot of grain on the iPhone image where you really don't have that in a nice soft grain free blur uh, with the Canon R. You're getting a lot of noise here on the right with the iPhone. And again, that goes back to pushing the camera more to the extreme and where these high end cameras, these really good DSLRs and mirrorless cameras are going to give you a lot more performance is in the fringe areas, you know, where you really need more performance out of your camera. It's not outdoors on a bright sunny day. So taking that even a little bit further, this is where your smartphone image just totally collapses and doesn't even compare. I shot this one on the left at ISO 25,600. It was basically in the dark and I got an image that really actually is pretty good as far as the greeniness goes. It's really not too bad there at all. And I can even fix that a little bit in Lightroom, but everything else looks nice. The colors look nice, sharp. The image on the right here, the iPhone image is just a complete mess. Dark situations, low light situations, you're not going to get anything that even comes close to comparing. And this goes for video as well as still photos. If you're shooting video with an iPhone outdoors on a bright day, you're going to get great video. If you shoot it indoors in dark situations, you're not going to get great video. You're going to get gr a grainy mess like this. So this is on the right hand side, almost it doesn't even compare. Uh, so that's really where you're seeing a huge difference is pushing the cameras to the extreme. The certain situations where you really need more performance out of your camera, shallow depth of field, low light situations, things like that, where you're going to get that from your DSLR, you're going to get that from your mirrorless camera like the Canon R the Canon, Canon M50, you're not going to get that kind of stuff out of your smartphone. But that being said, in ideal situations, I defy you to tell me the difference between this image on the left and the image on the right. You can dig in and pick out little nuanced things maybe, but looking at a photo like this on either your phone or on your computer, you really can't tell the difference between the two. iPhones, smartphones hold up great in situations like this. And like I said, if that's the camera that you have with you, then that's all you need. That's the best camera in situations like that. Having your smartphone to take snapshots and things when you wouldn't or ordinarily have a camera with you, it's irreplaceable. But in the more extreme situations where you really need that high-end performance, you can't beat a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below. We'd love to hear from you. I'm gonna put up a couple of videos here that you can check out related to other ways of taking pictures, you know, using smartphones and things other than, you know, maybe a big expensive camera to take pictures. So you can check those out as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.